Hello, how's it going? Tenro here, and welcome back to another 1.21 episode. If you remember last week, we went out an adventure to find all of these amazing dogs, and now it's time to protect them. But before I can go anywhere, we need to make sure everybody is sitting down so they do not chase me around this place. And while we were out adventuring, we also found the key to this wolf armor, and that is these armadillos. You see that little item that was floating right there? That's an armadillo scoot, and you use these to actually make the wolf armor. So my next plan of action is to make a little farm where we can breed up a whole bunch of these guys, and then they should be dropping their scoots so we can set up some hoppers and collect a bunch of scoots automatically. Of course, you can use a brush to get the scoots off of them, but you can only get about five uses per brush. I think they're scared of the zombie. It's okay. I am too. Goodbye. I've gathered some materials and I think building a little pin right out here, let's give a little three block gap here. One, two, three. We'll make a little five by five section right next to all these guys. There we go. Plop a little carpet down on the corner so we can hop on in. I'm gonna clear out this floor here because we're actually gonna be putting hoppers and I want them to channel down into a chest that'll be uh, right underneath there. Should be right in front. Perfect. This spot right here in front will be our collection area, so I'm gonna go ahead and put down a chest here, hop back on the inside, we should be able to see that from the back, and if we crouch and put a hopper down, we can put one there, there, and we're gonna just go ahead and have one leading straight down into that, with a few hoppers pointed into that center one, and then going just straight in from the back like this. Now I'm gonna use some moss carpet, you can use whatever kind of carpet you like, I just like this area to be a little bit more flat, so I'm gonna crouch down and place one over each hopper that will let the hoppers continue to function just like normal, but it'll cover it up, make it flat, and look a little bit prettier. And we can go ahead and test this out real quick by throwing some hoppers inside, you see they immediately disappear, we can throw some rockets, some golden carrots, they should all get sucked into the hoppers in the floor and fed right into this chest right over here. There we go, we can see it's working perfectly. Now as far as breeding goes, these guys really like spiders. Eyes. We can lure them over with one of these. Come on guys, you can do it. Come on in here. There we go. I love these things. Perfect. And if I sprint, they all freak out. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, now spider eyes. I can have two of you breed. There we go. And now we have a little baby armadillo. Look at that! I'm gonna breed these guys up a few more times and hopefully we should be getting some armadillo scutes in this chest before too long. And just like that, we've used up our last couple of spider eyes and we have a whole group of armadillos. Look at these guys. Oh, sorry. Oh, I love that. I've also spent some time breeding up these guys, so I have two more sniffer eggs that I'm gonna leave in here. I'm gonna go inside, place them on top of the mossy blocks there and there. Now I'm gonna just let this sit for a little while. Let's actually go check and see what we've got so far, just in a short amount of time. We got nine scutes, not bad. I'll throw these three up in there as well. And I'll just let this sit for a few hours. I'm gonna head down into my little hidey hole down by the pumpkin melon farm, and we will be back in just a few seconds. It has now been about 10 hours or so that we've been AFK, and if we look over here, oh my goodness, yes. Based on the rough math that I did with all these dogs here, I should need about three stacks of scutes to give them all some armor. So this is absolutely amazing. Let me grab four of these out of here, and we'll go ahead and make some armor for all of our dogs. If we head over to the crafting table over here, you'll just want to orient these, just kind of resembling a dog, honestly, and you get this wolf armor. Look at that. This is pretty great. Let's put it on one of these snowy wolves here. <gasps> Look at you, bud, you're all protected! And now that he's wearing this fabulous armor, the only way to get it off is to actually shear it with just a pair of regular shears, and it'll pop that bit of armor right off. You can also repair the armor with the armadillo scutes, and it'll just fix up any kind of cracks that may come on here. And I do actually want to go ahead and take that off- oh, hey, sorry guys. I do want to go ahead and take that off because I want to go ahead and dye every single one of these bits of armor in a nice blue color. So let's make a pair of shears, and we'll go right back over here and shear off the armor. Armor. Look at that. Sheer brilliance. Unfortunately, wolf armor does not stack on itself. You see, I'm trying to add it here, but it's just not quite going on, so we will have to do this in stages. I've counted all of my dogs, and I have 35 total, so I'm gonna have to do this in a couple of stages and then dye them as we go. And if we take one wolf armor with one blue dye, we should get our lovely blue wolf armor. Let's go try this out on that same dog here. Glorious. I love it. I love it! And again, if we want to take this off, we can just shear it and it pops right off. Same durability, doesn't lose anything. Now I'm gonna go make 34 more of these and equip them all on our dogs here, and we'll be right back to show you what that looks like. That is every dog dyed blue. All the wolf armor is now dyed blue. I've also used some of this extra blue dye for their collars. As you can see, they used to look like this. If you take some blue dye, you can actually change their collar color to any of the colors of the dye. So there we go. I decided to go with blue because, well, you know, blue. 
But also, it was a super easy dye color to get because it just came out of Lapis Lazuli, which I have a ton of. But I am curious if you have any other color ideas that might maybe go with each different breed, or maybe just a different color combination from the collar to the armor. I don't know. Let me know what you think. But that is it for all these guys. I'm gonna let them sit for a little while and probably breed up a couple of these, like the Woods Wolf and the Snowy Wolf that I only have two of, and just kind of get a little bit more going on. And while they sit there, it is time to get some automation going in this base. And we're gonna do that with crafters. I think that four should be enough. The first thing I'd like to do is in this farm over here and to turn all these little melon slices into full-on melons. Because right now, an ender chest. That's funny, we have a whole bunch of melon slices and we have to manually craft them right here into full-on melon blocks every single time we want to go trade them with our farmers. But now we have the crafter! We can do this all automatically! First step is going to be to make an item sorter so that we pull out all of the melon slices and separate it from the pumpkins. There we go, something like that should do the trick. We have our pumpkins being sorted off into this side, you can see our little filter set up just like in the main storage system we have all of our filters and a pumpkin and all of our filters and a melon slice so all the pumpkins just get sent straight down and the melon slices get dropped right here for the crafter to be able to pick it up and for the crafter we're gonna go ahead and put it just a couple blocks below this chest I'm gonna put a hopper there in just a minute once we're all finished you can kind of see this is a directional block it's got a little mouth looking thing right on that edge there that is where the final item will get ejected once I replace this granite block with a hopper all of the melon slices in this chest will slowly flow down all the way through into this crafter and we're gonna have all of these slots enabled. You see I can click it to disable it, so if we wanted to do a specific crafting recipe, we can do it that way. But the melon is nice and easy, it's just a 3x3 grid, and it will pop out in melon once it gets power. Unfortunately, we can't just have this power 24 7 we do have to power it every single time we want it to craft something. So what we're gonna do is take a comparator line output to be able to read when this thing is completely full and ready to craft a melon. I've got a nice little ring of stone right in here for our redstone to go on top of. We'll go ahead and start off with the comparator there, and then take 9 bits of redstone dust, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and to finish things off we're gonna go ahead and grab a repeater just to go ahead and throw that signal right back into the crafter, and if we go ahead and break this block here, we should be able to grab a hopper, throw it straight down, and it'll slowly start to fill up this redstone. There we go, and now we have automatic crafting melons. Look at this. This is absolutely wonderful. Now that we have that all figured out, right beneath the crafter here, we're gonna throw a little bit of a double chest. If we put a hopper there, it's just always gonna be sucking the basic melon slices out. So with a chest, as soon as it's finished crafting, it'll actually pop it straight into this chest and it'll continue down the storage system until we're all set and done. I've gone ahead and cleaned this place up just a little bit and I took a little extra hopper line to go down the end. It should never happen, but just in case something random that's not a pumpkin or melon comes through this line, it'll go down to this little reject chest. Otherwise, all the pumpkins go down to the bottom and the fully crafted melons go down to the middle right here. I'm almost finished organizing and finishing our first automatic farm. You can see this is where we originally had our pumpkins and melon slices coming down. And if we head right up here, you can see where I split it off. This is that same original line, but we split it off here to go to the left and then go into these item sorters. The pumpkins just go all the way down, the melons go into this little crafter right here and then the uh, random slot to the left of that, but now I just have to bring all of the different pumpkins and melons from down here and send them through this line. That will take just a minute, I will be right back. This is wonderful, I've got this whole area cleared out, everything got moved over here, we have all the pumpkins in this line, the melon slices in that line, and the crafter doing its work, because check this out, I've let it sit for quite a while, we have all of our melons and all of our pumpkins, quite a few pumpkins actually. And going up here, we notice we actually have a trap door now, oh it's nighttime. I need to be careful. But look at this, we cleaned up the outside so there's no more nasty little dirt mound. Instead, the minecart just sends all the items straight down this hopper line all the way into our system. Ow, that hurt. Let's go to sleep. Ah, daytime. I like the daytime a whole lot better. And the next farm to focus on will be our sugarcane farm, which should be considerably easier because we don't actually have to sort anything out. All we have to do is craft the sugarcane into the paper. So let me do that real quick and we'll be right back. Hey, get out of here. Well, this ended up being a little bit more complicated than I thought, but we finally have our automatic paper crafter. This system works almost exactly like the melon crafter does. The only difference is this crafter here has six slots disabled. You see these top three and the bottom three are disabled. That way we just get one little three row of sugarcane to be able to craft into paper. And the nice thing is every one of these redstone little outputs actually activates with... Oh, there you go. It's actually working right now. That's perfect. So every one of these disabled slots actually activates one of the nine redstone dusts, so you can have the exact same nine pattern like I have here, 
and these three activate and these three activate that makes six total redstone pieces so all we need is one more here and you see there is one more here as soon as that happens we get paper a lot of paper I also lowered the entire track down a couple blocks so that we can completely cover this in with nice flat grass and get a much better look from the outside. Ah, that's so much better than it was before. I love it. I do want to make an automatic rocket crafting little factory area right here. The only thing is that that will include both paper and gunpowder, and I'm not exactly sure how to do that just yet in a reliable way where it works every single time and doesn't get crammed. It sounds easy, but it gets a little bit more complicated the more I've played with it. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to this iron farm. Ooh, spooky. Moving over to this iron farm to craft the ingots into blocks. Well, I did it, and it looks kind of crazy, but it goes all the way down here, and it actually is functioning pretty well. There we go, we're getting some iron blocks, there we go, look at that, it's crafting them and throwing them into here, this is absolutely wonderful. I just love watching this thing craft, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, iron, boom. And if we jump up here, let's see, there we go, you can see kind of what I did, so that's where all the hopper lines are that are collecting all of the iron distributing it over to this chest here which is completely filled up and that's sucking it all the way down and putting it into our system. I only really had to make one sorter because it pulls all the iron out in this left side here and then everything else, which is just the poppies, gets sent all the way over to the other side and add up in this area here. But yes, it's working! We have iron blocks for days! Or at least we will, once all that gets sorted down in here. So yeah, that's pretty great. I'm gonna go ahead and call this episode off here. Oh, hello. I really hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please do hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're not already. You can also catch me over at twitch.tv slash Tenro every Monday and Wednesday with my buddy Nick playing Stardew Valley. It's a whole bunch of fun. We're there from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. A whole bunch of fun is had over there. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.